Greetings, this is I, Tantus Naravan Jacobin, Lord Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It's time to continue my discussion on anime series and using them in your best some games. I'm continuing with two more classic series since I've been talking about them, the original Super Dimensional Fortress Macross and the original Gacha Man series. I will also then be talking about some more from the previous summer 2015. I'll be talking about Gacha Man Crowds, a spiritual successor to that original Gacha Man, and Jitsu wa Watashi. So let's move on and start talking about, of course, Macross. Now, Macross, I've talked about some of it before. Macross has spawned so many different anime sequels to it, so many OVAs, movies, video games. It is a important part of the general culture of anime. It brought forth, similar to what Gundam, it also did a lot of influence on the Mecha series. So the storyline is this city-sized sh ship crash lands on this island on Earth, and the UN unites and sort of rebuilds the ship, studying it and learning its technology. And so in 20 2009, now that they've succeeded at this, they're having an inaugural relaunch of it, the SDF-1 Macross. It's this point in time that an alien race called the Zentradi attacks them, going after the ship. Now, a young civilian pilot called Hikaru gets drawn into this combat and is forced to become a military pirate to help, pi 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 help people. The ship itself and most of the city falls into space and goes into a different sector, escaping planet Earth, drawing the aliens away, of course. But the process then causes this entire journey back. Now, of course, Hikaru also meets Lin Minmei, this one person that will become a powerful idol and singer in the city, basically a voice of hope. This is actually in first the first instance of a anime idol that exists, Lin Minmei. So it's a very interesting little fact about her too. The entire storyline is about them getting back in this war against the Zentradi. Now as it's for its genres, it's a space opera. That's the easiest way of describing it. Space operas are very dramatic sort of space-based systems that deal with a lot of the humanity of dealing with space. It's also a real robot anime, I would call it. it, is, it that is a subgenre of mecha anime, but it is one where they build mechas that seem realistic and factual functioning, that they design their ideas about something that actually works. The Valkyries, which they design, the mechas, which switch between planes and robots, actually seem quite realistic because of it. It's also a romance. There is a lot of romantic kind of intermixings between the various characters and romances going on between various people. Uh, Hikaru has romance that sort of exists between him and Minmei, but eventually, like, he also has another person that he kind of likes too, and it's sort of this weird, who will he choose? But all the other characters sort of end up in sort of romantic situations too, many of the main ones, so it is a very interesting dynamic. Now let's talk about using it in your Bessem game. I would recommend 300 points for your characters. You're going to have them, of course, be basic humans and have their Valkyries, which they're going to fight with. They're going to be, more than likely, you want to have them on the Macross and helping fight against the Centrati. You can follow the entire storyline from start to finish with these characters that might have just been pilots that were there the entire time, fighting the battles, infiltrating ships, dealing with things that are happening aboard the Macross. You, of course, can take the choice to come to a different area of the... Earth Zentradi War and maybe take the place of other places, units, things like that when the battles are going on because really the Macross was the main sort of force in this war but there were other forces out there that were battling against it that you could easily represent in some way. It is up to you what you want to do. Now let's talk about Gotchman, or as it was called, Science Ninja Team Gotchman. Now there have been a number of series in it but I want to really talk and focus on the main about 100 episode series that first came out. It was a team of five teenagers who unite, you older teenagers, most of them, that united and gained powers through science in order to fight against this kind of evil organization uh, called Galactor and the person leading it, Berg Hertz, who, when they finally discovered this strange creature turned out to be that, this androgynous alien shapeshifter that was leading this force to attack Earth. And they would attack it normally with these giant mecha, which often looked like animals. So our team would have to fight either within the mecha or fight sometimes the soldiers on the ground because the evil organizations are trying to take control of Earth's natural resources and often using these animal-based mecha to do it. 
The team would eventually, though, have to call upon each of their own vehicles to combine into a supersonic plane, which with their supersonic plane could use its powerful abilities to destroy many of the enemy mecha. It's sort of and very episodic in that matter, but it's a very interesting sort of anime, and it is one of the classics, I would say. It's from the 70s. It's one of the better ones from that era, and it is a version of a Sentai team that you don't think about normally when you're thinking about them. Normally, most people go to Power Rangers, one of the early ones. This is really one of the early sources of it. Now I definitely call this an adventure one. They oftentimes have their little adventures going around as normal people that then getting swept up into something that's going on that seems dangerous or gets involved with the Galactor organization, what's going on there. It's of course a science fiction. It's taking place in the sort of, well, their version of an alternate future because I think it was taking place around 2000. But, you know, a version of a world that's more scientifically advanced than ours, that these kids are developing, are in these, like, super suits based on birds that are fighting out monsters and each have their own abilities. I would also call it a mecha, not because of the good guys really have a mecha. They have a plane! But because the enemy is mechas, because they're always fighting giant mechas, of the enemies. Now, like the previous one, I rate this one a 5. These are both great series to watch. Now, I would recommend 350 points for your characters. You're going to have the members of Gachima. They, of course, will each have their own vehicle, which they will have to combine in order to fight giant mecha sent by Galactor to steal Earth's natural resources. You're going to probably have it very episodic, but you're probably going to put into some of these episodes not just fighting the giant mecha, maybe infiltrating them, infiltrating bases that might be creating them, or dealing with what they've been stealing. They might have some more daily lives things going on just to influence and create more of a character dynamic that you're trying to build. Now, Gachaman Crowds has two series seasons, and it takes place in the 2015 Japan, sort of an alternate world, where slightly things are a little more advanced, like communications-wise, I'd call it. But we find our heroes, the Gachaman, who have these, gain this sort of almost power called the Note, which gives them this ability to manifest this sort of technological, like, suits that they use to battle out. And we have a new recruit, Hajime. Now, she's there when they start dealing with with this alien called Berghertz, who's destroyed many planets in the past and has Earth in his sights. And so he's kind of influencing things and making things very dark, and it's dealing with that. Now the second season moves away with after the results of that, moving into the effects of the first season have had on the world, what the changes are, and a new evil that's sort of coming in to cause bad things going on. Now this is an action one, of course. They have battles against some of, like, sort of monsters, battles against some of the influence that Berg has caused in the world, and the sort of minions he's manipulating into do things. It's a science fiction, because it takes place with the sort of alien technology, sort of super technology almost, that gives them these powers that almost seems mystical in a way, but really is kind of an unusual sort of thing. And I would also call it a superhero one, because they're, that's what they effectively are. They're superheroes, and Hajime acts very much so like one. Now, I rate this one a four. Pretty good. Wasn't my favorite between... It wasn't as... I don't think it was as good as the original Gachaman, but it was still pretty good. Now, let's move on and talk about using it in your best sum game. I would give your characters 400 points. They're going to be pretty powerful. You're going to have it that they're members of the Gachaman team, and they have each of their own bird transformations. They will deal with things like the mess and Berg and his influence. You could, of course, definitely follow either of the seasons and make it that your characters are entering in, in that point in time, or they're replacing the team for these points in time. Or you could come up with your own storyline completely and have that for your gotcha man to deal with. But you're going to have to sort of recognize that it's not only going to deal with the daily lives of these people and the adventures they have, it's going to have to deal with the society and the influence that things are going on. And maybe the influence of some of these threats are, because threats in society seem to be a very tied end thing, that the threat is just not trying to conquer, it's trying to manipulate the society to almost destroy itself very often. So let's move on and talk about Jitsuwa Watashi. Now this centers around a boy named Asahi, whose known fact is that he cannot keep a secret whatsoever. He's terrible at it. And he stumbles upon this really big secret. He finds out that his fellow student, this girl named Yoko, she's a vampire. And she's been allowed to stay here in the school because as long as she's not discovered, her father thinks it's fine. So now he has to keep this secret and it's hard for him. Now, he does also stumble on the secrets of a whole bunch of other girls. That there's an alien, a werewolf, um, 
demon that's many hundreds of years old that there's all these figures in the school of like kind of supernatural or ma or science fictiony nature and he's got to kind of deal with balancing that all out that he has relationships with all of them and kind of he does sort of begin to develop a relationship with Yoko over the episodes and the chapters of the manga that the two of them sort of are kind of romantically evolved but he also have to deal with all the kind of strange and unusual circumstances going on because of all the girls he's met I call this one a comedy, and that's for sure. It is so many comedic and strange situations going on, and they do so much dumb things which gets them into trouble very often. It's also a romance. The relationship between Asahi and Yoko kind of develops, and it's a very interesting and kind of poignant relationship that they really... It's good that they develop it and don't, you know, keep it going for way too long. I would also call this more supernatural than anything. Yes, there are some science fiction-y aspects with aliens, but there are more supernatural creatures and supernatural abilities in this anime than far than that. So I would definitely call it that, that there's vampires, werewolves, and demons. I rate this one a 5 also. It is It was one of my favorites from the season it came out with, and I'm very glad that it came out with it. I liked the manga too. Now for using it in your Besom game, I recommend 350 points. Make your characters be all these supernatural people and have a human NPC sort of be the focus point of them. Now, you don't have to have it all your characters are girls because the werewolf changes back and forth between the two of them, of course. And But you could have more male figures in there too. So your characters, but it's less that they have an attraction to them, more they have a connection to them. So you have your team of supernatural people and really what your adventures are going to be on are about the sort of daily school life mostly. And the things going on with each of them, the relationships amongst each other, the relationships with their family, the, the adventures that might come on because of any results of these different relationships of things going on. And I would recommend that you act a little bit more episodic and maybe focus on one of their main characters at a time that you might have, oh, here's some adventure with your person there. Oh, here's an adventure with your character there. And that you sort of focus around it, that whatever family, the relationships they have with each other, you focus adventures squarely around that. And you'll come up with these very interesting sort of comedic situations because your characters should be building themselves to be more comedic than anything. The point will not be for them to do things supernatural, but to be it and hide it. And comedy can result from that. Of course, then, you probably are going to want to create some kind of romantic element. Maybe one of your characters has a thing for your NPC. Whether And you'll, you figure out your characters first and then come up with the NPC because that's sort of when you'll begin to introdu introduce things. Once you know them, you can come up with that. So that's it for today. I introduced you four new anime. I talked about two more classics. I talked about a reimagining of one of those classics and another one from the summer 2015 that I really enjoyed and I recommend you checking out, maybe using for your Bessem games. But if you have any questions, comments, anything you want to say, anything you think I left out, please leave in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe to support the channel, the empire, and the work I do. If you want to show any more support, please check out my Patreon linked in the description below. But regardless, until the next time, I bid you farewell.